Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another video. You might think I'm wearing my guitar simply to do a musical introduction to another fountain pen review. But you'd be wrong then, wouldn't you? But they told me it was Igor. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? I had some viewers request a more in-depth look at my guitars. I'm happy to oblige and will be adding a guitar feature every month until I run out of guitars. By my current inventory, that'll take us to June 2021. And no, I'm not going to get more guitars. I don't think. I think. Now I want more. And for those of you that are just here to see fountain pens, I will not be replacing fountain pen reviews for my current schedule of every Wednesday and Saturday mornings. I'll be adding these guitar videos one Sunday a month. We're going to start with my pride and joy, my Grail guitar. The guitar I pined for and saved for and traded for for 40 years. My 2012 75th anniversary Gibson Golden Age SJ200. This is one of only 75 made by Gibson as a celebration of the original 1937 SJ200, made for country and western star Ray Whitley. It is a recreation of that very guitar. I'm going to talk about this guitar in some detail, as well as tell you the story of how I acquired it, and throw in a few guitar licks here and there, but nothing longer than 20 seconds, and no mention of the Beagles or Stupid Tramp, lest the YouTube powers swoop down and scoop up my revenue. So let's take a look at this stunning guitar right now. So in order to get my guitar up to standards for a video, for this video, I thought it would be in order to do a string change and clean up the guitar a bit so it can get its beauty shots. And don't worry, this won't be long and boring. I'm going to do a fast forward through the process. And we're going to take the strings off first. And there we go. So the next thing we do is we clean and maintain the fretboard with a little triple O grade steel wool. And we will apply our fingerboard conditioner. There we go, and we're going to let that sit for a moment and wipe off the excess. Now we're ready for the strings. I'm going to put them all into the bridge first and insert the bridge pins, and then we'll go from there. And then I just start going low to high. go so now that I've got all the strings on all I have to do is fire up my tuner and tune it to pitch so that's roughly in tune so now I'm going to grab them this 12th fret here and give them all a little bit of a tug And we're in tune. So 
So my studio is way too cramped to shoot a video of anything larger than a fountain pen on my desk. So I've moved into my living room here so we can chat about it and look at it at the same time. I'm going to tell you about this specific model of Gibson acoustic guitar, a little bit about the history of the model, some famous musicians who have used this model through the years, and how lucky enough I was to acquire it. The Gibson J200 model has been around in a huge number of variations since 1937. Back in those days, Gibson named their models after the body shape and the price. So this was a super jumbo model and cost $200. After the war, they were called simply J200, and the two names are now interchangeable. It's the largest acoustic guitar made, measuring 17 inches across the lower bout. Martin, Gibson's main rival, was making a large, ornate dreadnought guitar called the D45 for such singing cowboy stars as Gene Autry. Famed singing cowboy Ray Whitley approached Gibson and even made design suggestions for the original prototype SJ200, in 1936, which was then released commercially in 1937 for $200, which is the equivalent of $3,700 US today. It hasn't changed that much since the standard J200 model retails for only slightly more than that now. Even with the high price, this model remains very, very popular and remains an iconic and highly sought after guitar today. Stars such as Elvis, Pete Townsend, Greg Lake, Amy Lou Harris, Cat Stevens, the Everly Brothers, George Harrison, John Lennon, Bob Dylan, Jimmy Page, Chris Isaac, and Neil Young. Once you've heard of J200, you'll recognize it in some very familiar places. <laughs> J200 is big. It resonates and projects. You can hit it hard and the sound doesn't break up or distort, and you can play it gently and it articulates beautifully. It also records beautifully. So this guitar is not just good looks, but let's look at it anyway and go over the parts and features. The iconic Gibson headstock wave sports a jet black ebony faceplate with the old style Gibson script and logo inlaid in abalone shell. This is what the logo looked like in 1937. The headstock is triple bound. The tuners here are old style Gibson Imperials and the tuner posts are extra large diameter. We see the familiar Gibson Tulip inlay right there in the center of the headstock. And this is a tuner I've added so that I can tune the guitar without anybody seeing me. Back to the front again, there is a bell shaped truss rod cover and a bone nut. Then we get to the fretboard. Most J200s have a rosewood fretboard, but this one, like the original, is in ebony. We also see the first of eight fretboard crown inlays, also in abalone shell. The fretboard is bound in aged cream binding. You take a look at the back of the neck. It is in bookmatched flamed maple with a center strip of rosewood. On the end of the fretboard is another iconic Gibson trademark with that curly bracket. Then we come to the top. This is an antique sunburst solid Adirondack red spruce top with the classic J200 engraved and hand painted inlaid pickguard. Then we see the iconic curled mustache bridge 
from Gibson with a four ribbon, not a two ribbon, abalone shell inlay and six bone bridge pins with abalone shell inlays. And of course, a bone saddle right there. The top binding is seven layers and the back binding is five. The guts of this guitar sports hand scallop top bracing and the guitar is finished in nitrocellulose lacquer which allows it to age and breathe and get better with age and with play. And here is the back of the guitar, book matched, flamed maple. You can see that flame, it really does move with the light as if it's three dimensional. Beautiful. This is a gorgeous guitar. They only made 75 of these in 2012, the 75th anniversary. And they made 75 of them with the maple back and sides. And they made 75 with rosewood back and sides. And the rosewood was the original configuration of the Ray Whitley uh, J200. All the standard J200s from Gibson are now all maple back and sides. Special editions you'll find with rosewood back and sides. This guitar was around $8,000 US new retail in 2012. I didn't pay that of course let me tell you how i got this guitar after i retired from teaching i took a job at a local long mcquade musical instrument store selling guitars and audio gear long mcquade is a family-owned retail chain of musical stores in canada with over 75 locations across the country i wasn't ready just to sit and play my guitar and i'd never tried selling before and i love guitars so it was a good fit i enjoyed doing it full-time for a couple of years one of the perks of working guitar shop retail is that you get to see a lot of instruments come and go. It's both a perk and a hazard as well. I mentioned that I'd been searching for this guitar for about 40 years, the Grail guitar. Over 40 years of playing the guitar, I bought, played, sold, and traded quite a few. By the time I was working selling guitars, I already owned a Gibson J200 Standard, my Grail guitar. I'd finally traded and sold and traded until I was able to obtain a new standard J200. You can see that guitar here in this video clip. I had no desire to ever part with it. That was until one day when this fellow arrived at the store with about five Gibson Les Paul Electrics and this SJ200 acoustic. He wanted to sell them. Our guitar manager offered him substantially less than what he could get selling it privately, but he would not be deterred. He didn't seem to care about the loss. My eyes lit up when I heard what we paid because I could sell my standard J200 and pick up this guitar, even with our markup, with just a relatively low cash outlay. I let the guitar manager know I wanted this guitar. He told me that he was sorry, but he had already put the guitar into our store's annual attic sale and employees couldn't dip into that stock. I was crestfallen. I came home and told my wife how disappointed I was that here was a guitar of a lifetime and I couldn't acquire it because I was an employee. Both my son and my daughter worked at the store too. She said, I don't work at Long McQuaid. The attic sale was a two-day door crashing event. My wife, Wynne, waited in line for hours in the early morning waiting for the doors to open. She even brought a lawn chair. I was working the afternoon shift that day. When the doors opened, she made a beeline for the acoustic room, pointed to the guitar, and told the salesperson, I want that, and brought it home to me. I've told this story to friends, and they don't say, where can I get a guitar like that? They say, where can I get a wife like that? I was able to sell my J200 standard to a really nice man for a good price and I got my Holy Grail acoustic. Even though it was used, it was in pristine condition. It had hardly been held, let alone played, and came with a framed certificate and it came in a faux ostrich case that was just gorgeous. Gibson only warranties guitars for the lifetime of the guitar to the original owner. But Long & McQuaid has a performance warranty applied to new and used instruments for free for the first year, but is extendable for a maximum of $45 a year for as long as you maintain the warranty. So my J200 is warrantied from top to bottom, just as if I was the original owner.
this guitar sits in its stand right next to my desk and anytime i get the urge to play which is daily i reach for this beauty and strum it my entire office studio is humidified all year round as alberta is a very dry climate and these solid wood guitars can dry out and crack it would be criminal to keep this guitar in its case unplayed and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote Thank you.